Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm really stoked to have you guys here because honestly, I thought it would be fun to show the inner workings of the band, kind of how we vibe with each other. <laughs> Today's a little different. Today's gonna be a little different. We got our regular cameras to shoot the show, but we also got some behind the scenes. There's gonna be some cameras around. Just ignore these cameras. Ignore the camera. It's just behind the scenes. But I wanna to try to start by running St. Paul a little bit. Well, see the thing about music. Hi. You know, I always thought it was weird that people wouldn't stop waving to the camera, but now that I'm talking to you, I just can't stop. I have this sick, sick surprise for Corey and the band. I mean, I guess it's basically just sound. They're gonna be like, whoa, dude, that is insane. And I'm so ready for this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is that the six orange chart? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Something feels off. Oh, dude, I can put something on. Check <laughs> this piece <laughs> out, bro. Oh, nice. What do you guys think? Nice, dude. Nice. For the gig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, what? Oh, snap. <laughs> it says Come on, car on it. Come on baby. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's dark. Hey, it's good. What? Look, the jacket's tight, but it's a little much. Yeah, you're looking like bubblicious, dude. We're green, blue, yellow. But, dude, it looks like drumsticks. No, they're not drumsticks, dude. They're like knitting sticks. Those aren't drumsticks. Damn. It's, <laughs> the jacket's a bit much. Lose it. No, dude. Fine, let me know. Batar, do this. Batar, do that. Lose the jacket. Batar is one of my best friends. We've played together for what, 10, 12 years or something now. Tough part about having friends in your band, I've also got to be the boss. It, it's a disaster. It's a freaking disaster. Management's here. Can you guys take five? We noticed in the label system that songs in G are just not hitting anymore. You need to move the song to A flat. The walk up in the A section reminds people too much of old. My writing style is my writing style. I like the song. Oh, absolutely. We like it too. It doesn't sound like you like it. What if you wrote a song with like a pop singer? I'm not just gonna do a song with some singer just because. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna set you up with a new artist. No, 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 look. I've got a friend, she's dope, she's a great guitar player, she's a singer, she's in the country world. We've written some stuff together, and maybe if I ask her, she could do it. Make it happen. Now? Yes. Can you just give me some space? I got Lindsay L, she's coming. Lindsay! Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is so good to see you. It's so good to see you. You are here to save the day. You have, I'm, I'm serious. here for you whatever are saving you mean. Me. Wow, Corey, this is awesome. It's pretty Look dope. Look at this set. Pretty dope, isn't I it? love it. The band knows the tune. Perfect. Let's just rehearse it once. Okay. Play it down a couple, hold on. Play it down a couple yep. times okay. and you'll be out of here in an hour. Easy. Hey, Got it. You, you all right? Doing good? Not now, man. Come on. All right. All right. <laughs> Corey needs a lot of support during the day. Um, sometimes he, he just doesn't act like he needs that support. Don't wear my heart on my sleeve, no But I can't 
quite ignore it this time From the first night, your eyes met mine I haven't been quite the same since July It wasn't what you said, I can't forget But can't get this picture out of my head Every time I look at you something past you. I, that whole thing with Pitar, I think he's feeling a little alienated, so I want to try this bit where I do a little roast of the band. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Dude, I, love I know that. you're down. I know you're down. I just wanted to make sure you're comfortable if I bring up the eye thing. What? The, like, Disney eye thing? Disney eyes? Dude, your pupils are objectively large. What are you talking about? No, like the... Uh, all right, no, no, no. Forget it. Forget, dude, I'm sorry. Hey, no, no. ready? Yeah. What? Forget it, I'm serious. It's, it's no big deal. I'm sorry, man. It's, it's cool. No, 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 it's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll check with you, Kevin G. Or something. Yeah, I'm really, it's really great to, to be back here with the Wong notes, and it's, it's really great to, to, to see everybody again with, with, you know, like with my normal eyes. I, it's, it's, I, <laughs> It's Christmas gig at like a Macy's, right? Kevin's yeah. doing solo, oh, his yeah. piano and guitar. Yeah. Kevin's got his S90. <laughs> now the escalator. Keys. 88, 88 keys. And it falls forward. It's only, <laughs> it falls forward. He, no, he literally I dropped the keyboard. I uh, see this from the balcony. Yeah. Kevin falls down. <laughs> Superman's <laughs> after yeah. his yeah. S90. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds like a terrible gig. It was talking about rough gigs. 
Oh, uh, hey, stagehand, Peter. My worst gig was on a cruise ship. We were on the way back from Costa Maya to Galveston. Band lost the mic during their first song. Had to do it twice. Anyway, this O starts yelling for him to play Smooth by Carlos Santana and Rob Thomas. They didn't know it. I told him no. Sometimes he would go away. And then sometimes he wouldn't go away. Tough. After the gig, me and the trombonist had a few whiskeys and fell off the starboard side. Went in the water. He was still holding his trombone. We didn't see a first shark for about half an hour. Nine footer, hammerhead. We huddled together. After we floated for a while, he pulled his trombone up out of the water and it had been bitten right in half. Right down the middle. Teeth marks in the bell. After a while, this young man pulls up on a sea dew and throws us across the back. He was wearing Tommy Bahama and those water shoes with the separate toes. Couldn't look at the toes. Freaked me out. Never been on a boat since. Anyway, there's the batteries. Thanks. That's what eyes are supposed to look like, right? Pupils, just normal pupils, right? Yo, uh, you been through hair and makeup yet? She just told me to send in the next person. Oh, this is that new makeup artist, right? Yeah, yeah, what? I, you look great. <laughs> What's up? What are you looking at? No, no nothing. What? Nothing, nothing. No, you're all good. Uh Hi. Hey, John. How's it going? Good, how are you? Doing great. Your eyes look beautiful. I don't know what part is talking about. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, you're welcome. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you I'm later. Have fun today, okay? Yeah. Bye. Bye. What's up, Sam? What? You got my heart skipping the B, don't know how you do it. Corey, everything that you do, ho, ho, sup? We need another talk. About what, the song? Lindsay? The song was dope. Lindsay was great. No, the song and Lindsay were Good. But Good? Good. But there was an incident with somebody on your crew who's been exhibiting problematic behavior. I uh, think we both know who we're talking about. You're gonna have to <laughs> fill me in. No, his name starts with a P. Ends with an R. Has a T in the middle. I hate stuff like this. You're talking about that creepy stagehand Peter guy, right? Exactly. I mean, the only other person with a name spelled like that is, uh, Pitar. And, of course, it's not him. That stagehand Peter guy? Always handing people batteries, doing weird stuff. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake. Jake! Yeah? Here's your battery. Oh. Are these fresh? You guys gotta go. Glad we're on the same page. Let me make a note. First up, Fire Peter. All right, we got to quick shoot the outro to this episode. Hey, Corey. Where's Pitar? I haven't seen him, man. Yo, where's Pitar? What do you mean, left? I No need to fire me on flight to Serbia. Sorry about the jacket. No, I... I meant Peter.
Don't worry about those cats. I mean, Everybody's in their head about something. Tell you yeah, what, I skipped hair and makeup true. today after I saw Eddie. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was intense. They're so sweet, though. They're so oh, yeah. Sweet. Band's yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we ready to go? Here we go. And action. What's happening? Welcome back to Corey and the Wong Notes. Lindsay, that was a blast to play. <laughs> Corey, thank you so much. Your band is so dope. It's yeah. a lot of fun to play. That yeah. song we wrote together a few months ago. Yeah. Didn't really know exactly how we were gonna put it out or who no. was, but I'm glad that this worked out. I am so glad this worked out. I remember the day you sent me our demo and I was like, this song jams. <laughs> There's something about it. Like, I can't yeah. stop dancing. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I have a question for you because yeah. you are in the country music world, mm -hmm. but when I listen to mu your music and when I listen to you sing and play guitar and we just hang out and talk about music, you strike me as somebody who's more just kind of like pop music. Mm -hmm. And now I don't mean that as country is not that because yeah. country belongs in all of that, but it feels like something that's a little more specific. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what I've noticed is that if people are country, they just kind of, people think about them differently rather than if they're pop, which can be good or bad. Right. So what, what, what was that for you? Yeah, I mean, it's weird because I think that music should just be music, you know? I think that people, when they're listening to something, they don't really say, okay, I'm going to listen to this genre. They just find artists that they love to listen to. And yeah. growing up, I mean, Shania Twain was my idol as a little girl, so I started as a country songwriter. Okay. But then in my teens, I listened to Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Clapton. And so my influences musically come from like a blues, rock, pop background. Sure. So then moving to Nashville, I like kind of came back to my country roots as a songwriter. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll write country songs, I guess, because they have messages. But sonically, I go so many different places or I have influences from yeah. so many different places. And my favorite artists are artists that like fuse worlds together so that sure. it doesn't necessarily have to be like, this is who I am. This is what I do. It's like when you think of Tom Petty, like he's a little bit of this. He's a little bit of that. It's the yeah. way he sings. It's the way he he writes his songs. You know, John Mayer, the way he plays guitar, the way he sings, the way he writes that like make into this this mosaic of an artist where it can only be that one thing. And yeah. so I don't know. I'm a mishmash of a bunch of things. You throw a bunch of things in a blender and turn it on and then you kind of get something unique. Do you feel industry pressure to be one way or the other? All the time. But I think that's just natural in, in any job, regardless of where you are. You know, you're constantly going to be pulled left, right, and center. And in a way, I'm grateful for it. I think it challenges me as a musician and as a songwriter. And I don't think there's any right or wrong avenue. You know, I think music just should be music and it should be enjoyed yeah. by fans. And I'm so grateful for my fans who have a very... Um, wide patience, I guess. Yeah. And and just they, they know what they're going to get from me is like honest. And I'm just such a music nerd that, you know, sometimes I'll have something that sounds maybe a little bit more country and sometimes I want to play a funk song. Yeah. And I think that's the fun part of it. Like at a show, you can have so much dynamic. I mean, you go to a Stones concert, like the Rolling Stones are founded by blues music. Yeah. You go to a Keith Urban show and it's like a rock concert or Keith plays so bluesy. And so I honestly think that having a little bit of everything adds sure. to a show. When you feel the pressure, do you feel like it's people want you to be more country or people want you to be more pop? Usually people want me to be more country when I feel really? the pressure. Um, and and the good thing about it is I started playing guitar when I was eight years old, playing bluegrass music with my dad. So it's yeah. in me and it's who I am and, and was as a little girl. And so it's always, but it's always just a, a, a floating thing. You know, I need to write music that's honest to me at the time. And mm -hmm. When I look at, you know, you look at artists like Madonna, for instance, every album has its own thing, down to yeah. like the style of it, the sonic instruments that are on it, the songs that are on it, what the songs talk about. And so I think, or at least I hope I can be an artist like that, that over the rest of my career, hopefully for the next 
30 years, I don't know, that yeah, I'm yeah. doing this, that I can have albums that, that show different sides of me and that you know yeah. you can grow and, and, and turn into different things. Do you feel like your guitar playing, your singing, or your songwriting most defines who you are, or is it the whole combination that makes you the artist you are? I think that the most defining thing about me is the fact that I'm a female who plays lead guitar because you mm -hmm. don't see a lot of those or sure, yeah. at least the list of that is fairly short. I wouldn't be who I am as an artist without the way I sing and the way I write songs. So you can't yeah. have one without the other. And I've always struggled with just being known as a female guitar player because it's like, well, no, I'm an, I'm an artist. Like I discovered Keith Urban and John Mayer from their songs. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's a cool song. And then I went to go see them play live and I was like, wait a minute, they're incredible musicians. And that's yeah. what I hope people, you know, how they discover me or find out my music is like, oh, that's a cool song. And oh, wait, she can play too? Cool. Yeah, I think when you're somebody who has a lot of influences in a lot of different backgrounds, different genres, I know for myself, as somebody who likes to play instrumental music, yeah. likes to play vocal music, funk, jam, all the pop, all across the board, it can be hard to find a real home. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the industry wants us to be able to be put right here. I'm going to you for this sort of thing. Right. And I think for many of us as artists, if we can just kind of define what that thing is, that people get when I'm looking they for this you. thing. I know I can go to you for this. Right, right. I'm looking for this thing. I can go to them for that. I argue with myself about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for me mm -hmm. that I do all these different things. Because for me, it's fun. Right. And it's what I want to do. That's what keeps me energized. That's what keeps me wanting to do so many projects. It's just, it's really fun for me. When you want to do a project that's different from this box that people know you as, do you feel pressure to stay within the box or you're like, no, I can do something different? Um, because I'm an instrumental music person mm -hmm. a lot of times, or most of the time, I don't really care as much mm -hmm. as long as it really represents who I am as a guitar player and as a person and what I want to say. So totally. I have an album that is called Meditations that I put out with John Batiste. It's so good. Yeah, thank you. It's very different from everything that I did, but right. there was like, this is very different. It's like, yeah, but also I have a bunch of other stuff that's coming. It's its own piece of art yeah. that's a little bit different, and that's cool. As long as it feels like an honest representation of- So cool. then could we look at it as like more project driven? Like if you are doing a project, then that's what this thing is going to be. And then maybe your next project can be a little bit different. Absolutely. I think for me, I'm thinking of project to project, just different mm -hmm. things that are going to excite me to keep me wanting to play music for the totally. next 30 years. <laughs> and then it's totally. also just kind of my career path. So when I choose songs to do for this, I have to think, how's it going to translate live? Because if somebody hires me to play a festival, they're not going to get Lindsay singing the song with right. me or whoever else they don't it's not guaranteed that you're gonna be there Antoine or Cody or whoever else you is. can just make holograms of us and we'll show up and be on the stage I priced it out Jake okay, got great. a couple bids great. but it was uh up more there? expensive okay. than just hiring you to come in and do it perfect okay cool I'll fly out I'll fly out <laughs> but that's that's part of the thing is that in my artistry I do also have to think okay how can I make the songs and the music, write the songs I want to play for the album, yep. the instrumental stuff, but yep. also when I put out my albums, when I make my albums, they can be represented in my live show enough where people aren't going to be super disappointed. And then in that case, you know, I, I try to fit a little more of funk music with a lot of pop and jam influence okay. that the muso crowd can like, the guitar crowd digs. Mm -hmm. I like to have guest singers. So, and that's, I like openers on my tour that are vocalists. A lot of people ask me. Let me know, me, let me know. <laughs> I would love for you to come on tour. <laughs> but a lot of people are like, hey, this band would be perfect to open for you. And I think, yeah. ah, to me, I don't want to listen to a whole night of right. all of the same sort of thing. Yeah. And also I like the collaborative thing when, when you see a tour. So I normally like to have vocalists as openers or I love be that. on the road with vocalists. So that totally. way. They can sing on my stuff. I can play on there. 
sets or whatever. That's so awesome. How do you decide what instrumentation or how many people to have in your band? Because as you can see here, this is kind of a, a unique scenario where I just it's awesome. oddly <laughs> decided I'm going to have an 11-piece band. It's amazing, and I'm so jealous. <laughs> I mean, I would love to tour with an 11 piece band, but it's just that's that's a big band. I am frugal to a fault and I, you know, I've been known to get scrappy. I've just been doing this ever since I was a little girl. I've been, yeah. I've been touring since I was 10 years old. And yeah. so I just found ways to survive, whether it was me traveling with a loop pedal around Europe and figuring it out. We watched the videos. Oh, goodness We pulled them up at the house. Oh, yeah, we did. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> Lizzie we, was watching the videos and we were like, ah, pulling up all videos of each other. Of She's everybody. Of Pitar, <laughs> of you. Yeah, it was it was very embarrassing. Um, but you just kind of find ways to make it work. And even now, we're just doing so many different things. So if we are, you know, headlining club shows, I would love a bigger band, but sometimes that's in the middle of a run where we're on a festival with like really tight changes changeovers and having you know a six piece band that I love playing with yeah. is a little bit harder to pivot with logistically so we run as a four piece and I I've done a trio a lot which I love I love the trio dynamic but it's a lot as a vocalist to like lead a band front a band play all the leads play all the rhythm parts and so sometimes I like having one utility there yeah. at least right now who can totally. play keys or other guitar parts and yeah. And stuff like that. But, uh, gosh, when I can roll with an 11-piece band, then we will be happening. How about you just come out on tour with us, and we'll just play your music, we'll play my Corey, music, and we'll do that. Send me the dates. I I mean, I, I, my schedule's pretty open right now, so. Mark it, Jake. Are you recording? <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> okay, I have a question. So a lot of people wonder how the music industry works, mm -hmm. what kind of people are on a team. Yeah. Now, are you with a label right now? I am. Okay, so you're with a label. I'm curious about mm -hmm. some of that, what kind of people you'd have on your team. So I'm independent. I have a manager, two yep. managers. Yep. And then I have a booking agent. Mm -hmm. Well, I have two booking agents, but you do have two. I'm wondering for you, who do you have on your team as a label artist? So, I mean, starting out, I was everything. I booked my own shows. I was my own manager. You know, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. figured out. And then now I've been signed to a label for eight years. And so, um, yeah, I have a whole record label that has a marketing department and a promo department. The promo yeah. team has, you know, four different regionals and a national and a VP of promotion. The marketing department has three or four people. Um, there's like a publicity department. Then I hire my own publicist as well. Then I have an agent who has, you know, a branding agent and some other connecting opportunities like yeah. within the agency. And then I have a manager and then I have a few other managers above my manager and then I have a business manager and then I have a lawyer and then there's a lot of people to pay Corey. When when I like if I made ten dollars right now for a show. If you grossed ten dollars. If I grossed ten dollars and walked away with three, that's a really good day. Like a really good day. The beginning of that conversation I was thinking, dang, I need a label. <laughs> I mean, they're wonderful, and I love them so, so, so much. But it, it just, it's, it's all logistics of it. It, de it depends, I guess, what your intentions are. Like Three is do. a good one. Yeah. If I make thirty percent of gross, then I'm rocking. It's yeah, all yeah. math. I love math. Actually, math was my favorite. Subject. Math's nicer when. Um your piece of the pie in the diagram is bigger, though. That's true. That's true. Big pieces of pie in the pie diagram are, are much more delicious. <laughs> Let's say you were looking for a new manager. Yeah. What kind of managers are out there? And what would you look for in a manager? There's so many different kinds of managers. And, you know, there's, there's kind of the dichotomy with finding... Um, a very big management company that has lots of connections and very powerful versus the person who like believes in you and may not be as connected, but is like ready to like dig in the ditches with you. And then there's the ultimate situation, which I truly feel I have is a little bit of both yeah. or both of them, just depending on, um, on the company. And so my manager is like, blue and true man like he yeah. is ready to eat the dust with me and i will say bar none that is the most important thing to find in a manager is find yeah. somebody who believes in you as much as you believe in you and i don't think there's anybody who will work as hard 
as you, as you will for yourself. Totally. But finding that person who will be like second runner up, who, you know, goes to sleep and wakes up thinking about how they can grow your business. I mean, a manager is a very important position. I will say out of everybody in my team, my manager is the most crucial aspect. And the yeah. band live, because that's like yeah, the yeah, yeah. billboard to your your yeah. whole entire life. But yeah, having that manager, it's it, it truly is like a work marriage. Yeah, totally. You, know? you have a lot of people on your team. <laughs> I know, I know. And they're all wonderful, but but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people. Okay, so what do you do when you disagree with somebody on your team? Or don't see eye to eye with them on the direction you're going with something? It depends who that person is. Um, at the end of the day, I'm most of my team's boss. <laughs> That's right. So They're making a percentage of your money. Right, right. Unless it's the label, <laughs> because the label funds yeah, yeah, a true. lot that's of true. things yeah, that I do. True. So, you know, yeah, they wouldn't have music without the artist, but I also wouldn't have a lot of things without them. So when it's a disagreement with the label, we kind of sit down and, and just have a discussion about it and yeah. figure out, you know, what are their intentions? What are my intentions? Yeah. And it kind of is the ping pong match back and forth. But, um, but I am so lucky. Like I have been with a record label who truly believes in me and they're yeah. just like, we know what you can do. And, and it's just about finding the right way to communicate it. And so yeah. I think a little bit of pushback is healthy. If anything, I get nervous when there isn't any pushback. Cause I'm just like, Oh really? Yeah. Cause I'm like, I know that I'm not, right all the time or I, I I think that a little bit of pushback gives a better product at the end of the yeah. day you know and a better show and I don't want somebody to be like that song's great and that song's great and that song's great I want somebody to be like ah eh, you can do better than that song and then when I turn in a song and they're like this song is amazing I'm like I know they mean it so I actually yeah. don't mind a bit of pushback. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same way. I like to have an inner circle that can keep me honest. Yes. Honestly I have a Dropbox with all my demos for the new album. Hey, what do you think's good? The mixes, people will, there will be standouts and there's stuff that's like, eh, yeah. that one's not grabbing me. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I was a little tunnel visioned. And I, totally. yeah, like you said, we're not perfect. We don't all know Yeah, and everything. as a creative, like, I think it's so important for us just to create, you know, yeah. to write, to try not to edit it, to try not to think about marketing something or releasing something or the commercialability of something. And so then you want a team around you and we can flip to the managerial side of our brain to be like, okay, now let's look at this Dropbox of songs and see. Yeah. But, um, but as creatives, I think it's so important for us to stay in that, like, mindset of where the world is a kaleidoscope and we just yeah. want to try to create and then you have somebody else to judge it <laughs> yeah and you have to trust that inner circle whether really it be do. your band your team you really do i don't remember if i told you this actually the last gig before covid mm -hmm. was this huge festival that we were playing i was playing the late night set on the main stage right amazing it was heim Vampire Weekend. Amazing. Three minute changeover. Whew. And then I was playing the late night set, okay. right? My manager's there. The band is there. A little smaller version of the band. It was Rhythm Section plus Sammy G on sax. Awesome. I was thinking this is the biggest actual stage that I had played on as mm -hmm. Corey Wong at the time. Huge LED walls, iMag, huge crowd. I mean, it's Heim and Vampire it's Weekend. And then, like they have me come out afterwards yes, to just they do. keep the keep the crowd yes, amped. Yes, Corey Wong. Yes, they do. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm in my creative zone, right? Yep. I'm thinking, oh, this is hilarious. What, what are we doing? I'm down because we're gonna hype them up. We're just gonna keep totally. the party rolling, right? Yep. So I'm thinking, what's the funniest thing we could do that would grab people's attention in a way that's like, what? This is interesting. It's like, Sammy, give me your soprano sax. I'm gonna go out there solo soprano sax. Of course you are. To start the gig, start the set, I'm gonna play How Great Thou Art. <laughs> and I only know the first four bars. Great, I mean, at least you can play sax, that's awesome. So I was gonna play How Great Thou Art, the first four bars on soprano sax. And you're stoked about this idea. I'm thinking yeah. this is gonna be the most hilarious thing. I'm right. talking to the lighting director, because right. it's just the house People cats. Like, yeah. I didn't bring my own crew. It's like, hey, if you can start the set with a spot. The band and my manager come up, they're like, dude, this is too big of a moment. Don't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah, here yeah. to stay hyped, See? help keep them hyped. That's 
totally what I mean. Exactly. So, and I trusted them, and, and I just needed to snap out of it because yeah. I was in this total tunnel vision uh -huh. of this is going to be the funniest, hilarious thing. This will be something interesting for the internet. And I wasn't thinking clearly of, oh, what's just this experience really need? Right, and a lot of people who may not have seen you ever before, oh, absolutely. their Tons first of people. impression, yeah, yeah. is it gonna be solo sacks of how great thou art? <laughs> or is it gonna be like Corey Wong and his epicness with like a killer type band? Yeah, I know. And I will say though, that sometimes those glimpses of creativity are incredible. Like sometimes that tunnel vision of artists Bring us to places where it's like, yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, I mean, look at this set. Like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. bring us to places where it's really incredible. But you do need a team that sort of filters through that. Hey, bud, like, let's do the the, <laughs> the soprano sax solo moment at another show. But <laughs> this was this was my pushback to Sammy. Sammy's like, dude. You're not gonna be, you don't realize how hard it is to play soprano sax with the wedge <laughs> blasting at you. It's gonna feed back. I was like, yeah, but think about this, dude. <laughs> The most moving musical moment of my entire life so far was the first time I saw Vince Gill and Carrie mm. Underwood do How Great Thou Art at like the CMAs or something. And this it. is literally over YouTube. I was crying watching it I on love YouTube. It. What if I do it on soprano <laughs> sax here? <laughs> he looks at me, he's like, you're gonna compare you playing four <laughs> bars of How Great Thou Art on a soprano sax after Vampire Weekend and Heim were crushing. You're gonna compare Amazing. that to Vince Amazing. Gill and Carrie Underwood. Hey, but in your heart, those things were connected. <laughs> I was, I was wrong. They were right. When have you ever been wrong and had to be corrected? Oh goodness, how long is this interview? <laughs> um, so many times. I, I will to a fault push things stylistically. Sometimes too far out of country is where I, mm. where I easily am to a fault because I mean I would I would come play guitar in your band and, and be perfectly happy and be like this is awesome and sometimes you got that one too let's make sure we're still rolling <laughs> okay perfect <laughs> um and sometimes you know when I'm releasing songs to country radio I need to re remember okay Lindsay you grew up as a little girl from Calgary who loves to write country songs and so sometimes just like having that reminder in my brain of like, okay, in a live show, I can go off and have this like long 10 minute outro solo and make it a thing. But when I'm releasing music or specifically like releasing something to country radio, it, it needs to be a certain thing. And yeah. so I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say wrong, but sometimes I need to be directed a lot in the studio and just yeah. reminded of like where I'm going. Sure. And yeah, from a live performance, I will say, like, some managers have been like, hey, Lindsay, put down the guitar and just just stand out there and do your thing. And I'm just like, I mean, no. <laughs> I can't, I I can't do that. that. I can't I that. be like, I'm not a this singer. Like, I'll put the guitar down and put it behind my back and, like, entertain a crowd, but it's a huge part of who I am. It's like another limb off my body. Yeah. Or I play piano. I mean... I, I play a lot of instruments. The only instrument I don't really know how to play is drums, but... Um, or soprano sax. Or, or soprano sax. <laughs> you did admit that earlier, that you can't play yeah, soprano yeah, yeah. sax. Other than that, I will, I will dabble on a lot of things, but I'm just, you know, I'm not a this singer. So I, yeah, I know yeah, yeah, where yeah. my own boundaries lie, and I, I like will that. easily put my foot down when I need to. I've never seen James Hatfield without a guitar. Right, exactly. Exactly. And with that, I want to say thanks for hanging. Corey, thank you for having me. <laughs> what a blast. <laughs> this is so awesome. I can't wait to go on tour. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Today's really made me feel a sense of gratitude for my band, they're my friends, they're my family. Gratitude for Lindsay being such a good friend coming here and kind of saving the day, I guess. And I've really just realized once again that there's no way that I could make this possible without my team. We good? Cool, let's hit it. Can anybody here play drums? Lindsay, can you play drums at all? I mean, I've, I've never played drums, but I'll try. Okay. 
Jake, can you, can you put her ears on? Yeah. Uh, he's left hey, thanks ears. for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. Two, three, oh!